Hello and welcome to this Football Manager 2023 series where we're hoping to take one lucky club onto victory into the higher leagues and possibly even win a Champions League. So let's get into it. I've created my guy already and I know the team that we're going to be picking. It's going to be Blackburn Rovers in the English Sky Bet Championship. I have a moderate budget with high aspirations and we're hoping to take them there. So we'll get the league set up quickly. I opt to go for the South Americans in the game and then top European clubs in there. Don't want to add them key staff. We'll give ourselves a bit of a break when we start the game up. And we'll throw in a medium database. Now, managerial style, I like to be a tactician. I like getting into grips with set pieces, corners, free kicks and the formations that happen. And there it is, it's final. We are signed for Blackburn Rovers. Let's hope something good comes of it. Obviously, Blackburn won the Premiership back in the day. You have got three of them Premierships, if you count all trophies as well. Three-star reputation and predicted to come 10th. Currently will play five at the back with two holding midfielders, so quite negative and defensive. It's not going to be my style. Or at least I don't think so. We're not seeing the calibre of players that we're dealing with. And the club aims and aspirations to develop players using the club's youth system. That's quite a hard one for us to do with this lower league, but we'll give it a try. Work from the wage budget, that always helps. You don't want to bust the club. And they want a top half finish this year. And I think we can easily do that. That's what we're hoping for. So there it is. The supporters expect us to be in the playoffs or slightly different views to the board. I think we'll stick to the board one. So let's get into them tactics that I normally employ with my teams and football manager. I'm a vertical tiki-taka type of manager. I'm going to be playing the 4-3-3 with one defensive midfielder. Hopefully quite an attacking tactic for the championship we'll not be playing no five at the back with two hold midfielders positive mentality i'll be asking the teams to deliver to the flanks and not play through the middle we'll get some wing play going on i'm happy for them to mix the crosses up low and high floated we don't want to rush things, we want to be patient with the build-up. I do like expression with the players, but we need to make sure that we're holding that ball, not losing it. And we'll go wide also with distribution from the goalkeeper to both our left and right backs. So they're going to be pivotal in our build-up play when we're going from defence to attack. And these are just what I initially go with. We'll start editing them as we go along with the team. See what their potentials are like and the players that we're dealing with. This is all great. Building these tactics, but then if your players aren't of the standard, you end up playing five at the back with two in defensive midfield, it seems. So not a bad roster of players we've got here. It's a full squad, very full squad. Now we have got some household names, Diaz, Bradley Dack, Travis, Buckley, good players, Daniel Ayala, who's been around for quite a while now in centre defence, he's well known in the championship now, spells with Middlesbrough, now at Blackburn. Some good ratings, some good potential from some of our players as well, that'll be very handy for us. Not too much money to be made in the transfer market from selling players, but it's not initially what I'll we'll be looking at. Bradley Dack there, as I mentioned before, worth a couple of million. And we just started putting some players in to our starting eleven to see what options we've got. And it's not a bad starting eleven, to be honest with you. Definitely some improvements. I'm already looking at a centre defensive mid defensive midfielder to get a replacement on. I'll take a quick look at our staff. We've we've got staff. How good they are, we'll have to see. But the thing that interested me straight away is that 
there's only one scout in this club. So we'll definitely be getting another scout hired. Especially if we're wanting to get a couple of new faces in the door. So we found Simon Jones. Who uh, bargained hard with us on a contract to be a scout. We're actually getting down to an agreeable level. Which will help us in our quest to recruit. Like I said, defensive mid, that's what we want to uh, improve on immediately. It's the first thing I've spotted that definitely needs some improvement. So, set our ambition high for a three-star ability player and get our scouting out to sweep the market for us and see what they bring back. So, we get on to the fines then, and I... Generally, I'm not too strict. The only thing that I don't like is when players decide to go in AWOL without allowing the club to know. And if your discipline is not in order, the third red card you get in two weeks wage fine. You can't have poor discipline in this team. We're together as one. That's my mentality. So we look at our team leaders. Travis up there. Bradley Dak as a team leader. Our goalkeeper. Strong player. And this is the first time meeting the squad. So we're just letting them know, you know, I'm not a not a horrible guy. I'm here to man manage this team all the way through to the Premiership. But one thing they did not like in the slightest is when we offered them any coaching experience, negative all round. This club uh, hasn't got any new coaches or managers in them. It seems not at the minute, at least. So we had to. Uh, Make sure we could just bring the morale up a little bit by getting away from that coaching question very quickly. Told them what wanted to finish in the top half of the table. They seem very happy with that. And then let's give the cup a little run. So I'll seem pleased with that. Everyone's morale did go up at least. Very positive there. So just don't talk to them about coaching and we'll be fine. Now we have got some friendlies coming up. Now the first one is the Blackburn versus Blackburn. I know, huge line up there. We're going to put an intra-squad friendly together. I've picked my 11 that I think on paper at the minute is what I'll be going with into the season with. Obviously, barring any transfers that we get. So let's just see how they get on. We'll have a quick couple of highlights here. Playing the new formation, not the five at the back that they used to. Playing my 4-3-3. It's 4-1-2-3 really with that defensive midfielder. Now, let me tell you enough of this for free. That high Sarge, he won't be getting in a team with a pass like that. He's absolutely murder-balled his team there. So he, he's already in the bad books on uh, Blackburn side B. And I think he might stay on Blackburn side B, to be honest with you. Made a big uh, change at half-time there, giving some of the people on the bench a run for the money. Look at that for a ball, by the way. What a great goal that is for Ryan Hedges. Really good ball at half-time. It's 3-1. Oh, that full time, sorry, that doesn't help, does it? <laughs> but 3 1 for uh, Blackburn side A. So they impressed with that nice goal at the end there as well with that ball. Hoping to see some more of that in future games. Wasn't pleased when I told them they had to play like that though in the league. Didn't take too well to that. And here is my first problem of the season. Briatin Diaz has got too big for his boots. He's in the last year of his contract and he's already telling me I'm off. I'm considering my options, which to me says I will leave in the club at the end of the season. Not interested in negotiating a deal. You know, I go in there and ask him, do you do you want to, you know, consider that? No, not, not in the slightest. We'll try and win him round towards the end of the season and hope that he doesn't get poached by another team. Four friendlies, five friendlies, sorry. No, four friendlies to go for this uh, pre-season before we get stuck into QPR at the start. So let's look through Dragida United. Good cross there. Taking his time. Patient build up. That's a good goal there. Although we do concede. Not ideal. Good long ball there across to Gallagher. Crosses the ball into Diaz. What a finish, bottom right-hand corner. That's why we want to keep our man in the team. So we 2-1. Uh, Diaz with two goals. Had one disallowed in that first half. Some good play here. 
This is what I want to see. Some nice pass the move inside to side. Opening the space up. Good cross into the box. Diaz with his hat trick. It's only a pre-season friendly, but when that is happening for you, that is brilliant. This is our squad layout. We've got some good depth in the squad. You see, Diaz is the best player out the front three, and that's always something quite uh, promising. So a player who can link up like that. But like I said, that centre defensive midfield area is what I want to improve. However, Matty Vidra on the market. Our scouts have brought them to me. Some familiar names here, out of contract. Victor Wanyama was out of contract. Ivan Tapia, out of contract. Zero compensation needed. Looks like a good signing. The scouts give him A minus, advanced playmaker. Three stars, 23 year old, Argentinian. Some good stats there. I'm not really playing with an advanced playmaker in this formation at the minute. And then we've got an A plus, Almandra from Boca Juniors. Now he's a three star advanced playmaker support role. So we'll consider him. Braderich, A minus, gonna be a good signing. Four stars are what they're giving. He is 30 years old though, but he can play as a defensive midfielder at three and a half stars in this squad. So one to consider, we'll definitely put him on the shortlist. Ivan Tapia has been offered a contract from Leon. Now he doesn't fit into the team, but you know, 23 years old from Argentina, he could be could be something. So maybe we if we just tinkered about with this formation here and put that to an advanced playmaker, he would fit in. Although John Buckley is just as good, but he wouldn't be bad having some strength in depth on the bench there. Could be worth it. We'll be third in line. Buckley, Dak and then Tapia. But you can play in multiple positions there at very good uh, rating. So we'll try and offer him a contract and see what happens. I think we'll make the players for 2024-25. Once 6k a week, appearance fee, we'll settle with that. So with that contract negotiation of the way, we'll get into that next friendly, which we absolutely smashed. No need to go through the highlights for that one. And this is some of my favourite bit of Football Manager, sorting out corners. A big plus for me is the management of corners and how many goals you can get from just setting up the right tactic and this one here is something I use every year it works you just need to put the right people in the right place front post you want someone with high jumping high heading back post you want someone with high jump high head and then the other two you really just want someone clinical who's there to finish make sure your defenders are back as we go into playing Cabin Teela, never heard of them, not a clue where they're from. We should absolutely smash these. That is my hope. As we see the lineups and get into the game. Let's have a look at the highlights and would you look at this? A corner and what happens? Back post to front post, first goal. And that is why he set corners up. You might think this is an action replay. It's not, it's another corner. Back post straight into the net. So we set our corners up and look at that at half time. It's 5-0, and two have come from corners. So that is the impact that corners have made already. Second half, we managed to add some more goals there. Diaz gets himself four on the score sheet. He's 8-1, we beat these. So, you know, not a great test, but it's good to see that our corners worked out. And yet again, my problem of Diaz wanting to leave the club is back as Hoffenheim come in to offer him Colne and Leeds offer a transfer fee as well and it looks like there's even more interest. We're going to keep rejecting that until we can. Now our scouts have brought this one to me. A lad called Pape Saar from Tottenham Hotspur, 19-year-old midfielder. Got not too bad stats, so we're going to try and pinch him on loan here and see if we can get something out of Tottenham. But obviously Daniel Levy being the hard bargain that he is, he wants 8.5k a week in playing so we'll pay that. Now, that is pre-season done, so make sure that you check out the next episode when we're getting into the season, hopefully sign some players. Hope you've enjoyed this first episode. Make sure you tune in for when we go against QPR. Cheers for watching.